Hello everyone and welcome! In today's video we are going to talk about and rank every equipment in Risk of Rain 2. The equipment slot is incredibly important to every run. You are essentially picking what your fifth ability is going to be for your character. So it's very important to know which ones are good and which ones aren't. Really quickly before we begin I would just like to remind everybody that liking and subscribing are both greatly appreciated. They show me that you like my content and they help show YouTube that they should show my content to more people. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. We're gonna start off the list with the Blast Shower, which I think is going to go into the B tier. The Blast Shower is a little interesting. Its only stated effect is that it cleanses debuff, and while this can be pretty useful to combat Void Touched or even overloading enemies, it's not an incredible effect in and of itself, especially when compared to how strong some of the other equipment items are. What makes the Blast Shower stand out against its lower tier brethren though, is that it re sets the cooldown on bands, which includes both the Kiaros and Renalds, as well as the Singularity Band. This opens the door for a pretty powerful build option, relying on bands and blast shower for the majority of the damage. Next we have the Disposable Missile Launcher, which I'll be honest and say is one of my favorite equipments. It is the definition of fire and forget. It does a lot of damage, has a pretty reasonable cooldown, and can really help with proccing items, especially on survivors that have trouble proccing it with their own kit. Railgunner has difficulty proccing Shattering Justice, and Loader can't do it at all. Disposable Missile Launcher helps solve that issue. Acrid, who thrives mostly off of his poison, just doesn't hit the enemy that much. In getting the Disposable Missile Launcher, makes items like Crit Glasses and Poly Loot a lot stronger on him. And for that reason, for me, this item goes into the S tier. The Eccentric Vase on the other hand is going into the C tier. The only reason this item escapes going into the Scrapper tier is because this equipment allows you to skip pillars with any character and with any item. Personally, I'm not a big fan of going through pillars. It takes a long time, and it puts you at an increased risk of dying during your run. So on a survivor like Commando or Bandit, it, or anyone else who can't naturally skip pillars, Eccentric Base can be a good pickup. The credit card is pretty disgustingly good, and well deserves its spot in S tier. Being able to abuse multi-shops for extra items, which can then be either scrapped or printed, or just kept in bulk, is pretty valuable, especially if you're going to be looping, because the more stages you go on, the more multi-shops you're going to see. It also makes the shipping request form one of the best items in the game. It's literally just two free extra items on every stage. In that sense, it kind of breaks item economy. And as a further minor benefit, which honestly it doesn't need, it also gives a 10% discount on every interactable, making you go through stages just that little bit quicker, and make those scamming shrines of chance not quite as much of a headache. Back at the bottom, the foreign fruit is going to be our first equipment going to the scrapper tier. Healing overall is just not that strong in Risk of Rain 2, especially if you're the type of player to seek out more challenging difficulties like Eclipse 5 and up. Healing is halved on those. And then on Eclipse 8, where there's permanent damage, healing gets proportionately less value based off of how much damage you've already taken. On top of that, even on Monsoon and below, there just isn't much benefit to taking this equipment, especially when there are so many other better healing items. So for my money, I would avoid this equipment at all costs. The FMP is our next item on the list, and it's going next to the Blast Shower in the middle of the pack. While the FMP can be incredibly strong if you get the right items, which means gasolines, ignition tanks, will-o'-the-wisps, and hopefully ceremonial daggers, the issue is that it just doesn't do anything if you don't have those items. And unless you're stacking those items, the damage output of Forgive Me Please is just nowhere near as high as some of the higher tier equipments. So although it has very high highs, it also has downright useless lows. Gnarled Wood Sprite is a bit of a standout for me. I'm putting it into the A tier. The reason is that there is functionally no cooldown on this item. It just constantly heals you. When you do use it, you get a nice bump of health, and the cooldown is only 15 seconds. I would say if you are desperate for healing, or if you're on a lower difficulty and you're running a healing build, Gnarled Wood Sprite should be your go-to healing item, unless you can pick up a Wungus. Poor Gubo is going to go into the D tier though. This is one of the most underwhelming additions from the Survivors of the Void DLC. I don't understand why this equipment does such little damage. Even if we take away the fact that the AI in this game is inconsistent at best, 
the damage and health of the Gubo just aren't that high. It doesn't stick around for that long. And on top of all that, for some reason, it has an almost two minute cooldown. If you consider the fact that the Gubo can also be void touched and kill you, I really don't see any reason to pick up this equipment. So it stays in the scrapper tier. The Gorag's Opus I think is going to go into the top of C tier. This item is a little interesting because if you're playing solo, this item is pretty useless. A 100% attack speed buff for 7 seconds really just isn't that good. But if you're playing in multiplayer, or if you're picking up a lot of drones, like with a spare drone parts build, or if you're playing Captain with his defensive microbots, the Gorag's Opus can actually help them put out a lot of damage. So I would say to only pick up this item in those particular situations. The Jade Elephant is our next item on the list, and I think this one is going to go into the B tier. The effect of this particular equipment is wildly strong. 500 armor is roughly the equivalent of 85% damage reduction, which is a ridiculous amount of damage reduction. That can let you straight up tank some attacks from even the Voidling. The downside, of course, is that it only lasts for 5 seconds, and it's on a 45 second cooldown. That basically means that you have to know that you're about to take damage. If you don't have much mobility, and you're afraid you're gonna get blown up by the allied warship unit's ground explosion, the Jade Elephant can be a pretty good counter to that. Similarly, if you're facing a Stone Titan, and you can't get behind cover to avoid the laser, popping a Jade Elephant can make that damage absolutely trivial. But because the effect lasts for such a short amount of time, and the cooldown is so long, long, I don't think I can move it above the B tier. Milky Chrysalis is also going into the B tier. Much like the eccentric vase, the Milky Chrysalis can allow some survivors who don't have much mobility to skip pillars. But unlike the eccentric vase, it actually has some pretty good use aside from that. A 15 second 20% movement speed buff with the ability to fly around to avoid attacks is actually pretty useful even when fighting Mythrix. You can think of it as having Artificer's ability to hover temporarily. So honestly, not too bad of an item, and it's gonna sit in the middle of the pack here. The Molotov on the other hand is another disappointing Survivors of the Void edition. For whatever reason, even with a bunch of ignition tanks, this equipment just doesn't do any damage. If you combine that with the fact that it's basically useless against anything that's flying, then I think there's really no reason to pick this up. The only good thing I can say about it is that the Molotov can apply a burning debuff for Deathmark without the gasoline's condition of having to kill an enemy first. But even with that, I think this equipment belongs in the D tier. Ocular HUD is our next item and it's going into the C tier. Getting a 100% critical chance can be a nice boost of damage, and it does have some synergies, like with Shatter Spleen, Predatory Instincts, or Harvester Sight. However, the downside is the more crit that you get, and you likely are going to be stacking it because crit is incredibly powerful, the less value you get from this item. I would say if you don't have any other better damaging equipment, the Ocular HUD isn't atrocious, but I would never search it out. The Prey on Accumulator is a bit of an interesting damage equipment. It's a little difficult to use because of its long charge up time and outrageously long cooldown, but the AoE and single target damage it can pop out is tremendous. If you're going through a run and are worried about your bossing damage, the Prey on Accumulator can fix that issue for you. I think that as far as the damaging equipment goes though, the outrageous cooldown on it makes other damaging equipment just a more attractive option. So it's gonna stay in the beat here. Next on our list is the Primordial Cube, which is going into the C tier. Really, the cube's only use is to provide a little bit of crowd control. It can be pretty convenient to group up a bunch of Lemurians, Wisps, and Beetles, and then kill them all at the same time with one gasoline. But at the same time, if you have that gasoline, you probably don't care that much about grouping up your enemies. And on top of that, the Singularity Band kind of just does what the Primordial Cube does, but without taking up your equipment slot. So I think it's going to have to stay in the C tier. Radar Scanner is up next, and man, this item is pretty garbage. I can't imagine looking at all of the incredibly strong equipments on this list and saying to yourself, man, I really want to use Radar Scanner. If you get lost easily, I can maybe see this having a use, but you're going to be going through the stage and looking at all of the items on the ground anyway, so I don't really understand why you would pick this up. The only use that I can remotely think of for it is finding the pressure plates on the abandoned aqueduct. Other than that, this is pretty useless. 
The Recycler is next on this list, and I think it's pretty undeniable that this is the best equipment in Risk of Rain 2. Once you learn how to play the game, the biggest barrier to your success is the randomness of the items that you're going to get in your runs. Luckily, the Recycler is there to solve that problem for you. This is the best way to mitigate randomness and get more of the items that you want. Of course, it doesn't have any combat power, but honestly, it doesn't need to. If you're getting more of the items that you want, that have the power in and of themselves, then you don't really need an equipment to do the damage for you. With that said though, please don't forget to swap it out for a combat equipment once you're ready to go to Mythrix. Up next is the Remote Caffeinator, which is going to go at the top of C tier. Honestly, this equipment is not that bad. It gives you a mini captain nuke every minute, and then you can activate that nuke to heal. But the real strength of the remote caffeinator is that this item can weaponize both fireworks and squid polyps for you. There are definitely viable builds that use the remote caffeinator and the two aforementioned items to pretty consistently beat Mythrix, and even the Voidling, especially if you have a pocket ICBM to go along with your fireworks. But aside from that niche case, I don't think it's very useful in comparison to the other equipment. Next is the Royal Capacitor, and this is definitely one of the strongest damage equipment in the whole game. Using the Royal Cap to proc bands is not only a very strong strategy, but a very reliable one. Honestly, using the Royal Cap to proc anything is a strong and reliable strategy, whether it be ATGs, polyloots, or bands, and that's on top of its very high damage in and of itself. To add a cherry on top of the cake, for whatever reason this equipment only has a 20 second cooldown, which is just ridiculous for how powerful it is. You can think of this like a single target Preon accumulator, except the Preon has an over 700% longer cooldown. Overall I'd say this item is very strong and definitely worth picking up on every single character. Next we have the Sawmerang, which honestly is not a bad offensive equipment. On big enemies that the Sawmerang is going to spend a lot of time inside, like Beetle Guards, Vagrants, and Stone Titans, the Sawmerang can actually outperform some of the higher rated equipments, and then stack up a ton of bleed on top of it. Unfortunately, the reason I don't put it higher is because of three reasons. First of all, it's pretty bad with gestures, because it needs to be aimed manually. Second of all, the effective range on this item is very short, because the three blades spread out in a cone, meaning to be most effective, you need to be right up close and shotgun the enemy with it. And thirdly, because against small enemies, you will not get that much value out of it. Against Mythrix, who's not only very small, but also very fast, the Sawmerang is not going to have nearly as much value as the disposable missile launcher. So it's going to stay in the B tier. Next up is the Supermassive Leech. And boy, let me tell you, this item is garbage. 8 seconds of 20% lifesteal really just isn't worth that much. Especially when you consider the Gnarled Wood Sprite just gives you a ton of healing all the time, for free. And then if you consider on top of that that the cooldown is 60 seconds, I think it's pretty clear that the Leech is an inferior equipment compared to the other options. The backup is kind of similar to the Gorag's Opus, except it has an even more precise requirement to do good damage. And that is, you either need to have spare drone parts or empathy cores. Spare drone parts will buff the damage of the backup, and the backup will buff the damage of the empathy cores. But without either of those two items, this equipment is super underwhelming. The four drones that show up don't do that much damage, they only last for 25 seconds, and for some reason this equipment has an almost 2 minute cooldown. I really don't understand why the cooldown is so long. Overall, not a very exciting item, and barely makes it out of the scrapper tier. The Crowdfunder is kind of an interesting item, because all things considered, this is the highest DPS equipment in the game. It even out DPSs a lot of characters M1s, but of course, there is a catch. And that's obviously the money cost. Using the Crowdfunder can be kind of difficult if you're going to Mythrix on stage 6. It can put a big dent into your income, which can make going through stages a lot slower. But against Mythrix in particular, this item is wildly strong and shores up a lot of the disadvantages that some survivors have. Acrid can proc all of his items, 
Mercenary can attack from range, and Railgunner gets to take advantage of bleed. And if you're planning on looping in your run, I would highly recommend picking up the Crowdfunder, because it just gets stronger and stronger the more money you get per stage. When you loop, you definitely reach a point pretty quickly where money is just no longer a consideration. And once you hit that point, you can have the Crowdfunder on all the time and have it do a ton of damage. Overall, I would say this goes in high A tier. I almost want to put it in S, but the fact that its value is a little inconsistent on non-looping runs makes me not want to. The Elephant Gun is up next, and I think this is pretty easily going to go into S tier. Being able to guarantee a boss item can wildly change a run. Getting a Charged or Molten Perforator, Shatter Spleen, or Little Disciple can absolutely turn a run around. And then plus as an added bonus, you can take the Consumed Tricorn and give it to an Equipment Drone to have a little boy follow you around and say ahoy for the rest of your run. What's not to like? Additionally, if your build is bad and you don't feel like you have enough damage for bosses, this is a pretty easy pickup for you to get a free pass on that stage. In my opinion, easy S tier. The last of the normal equipment we have is the Volcanic Egg, which honestly, I think is pretty garbage. The real nail in the coffin for this item is that while you're in flight, you can still take damage, and I don't understand why. I feel like to make this actually usable, it needs to be more similar to Shadow Fade. But regardless, the only real use that this item has is to skip pillars, but because your movement speed is set while you're traveling in it, you need to have at least one fuel cell to make it, which which makes the volcanic egg the worst out of the three pillar skipping equipment. So I think because of that, it has to go into the D tier. The last seven we're going to talk about are the elite aspects, which are a little different because not only are they passive, which means they get no benefit from gestures or fuel cells, but they're also wildly hard to get and super inconsistent. So while in the completed list, which by the way is posted in the description of each of these tier list videos, I will be ranking them alongside the other equipments. For the purposes of the explanation, I'm going to rank them separately because they are so rare. Starting off with the glacial aspect, which is really only useful as an additional debuff for Deathmark. The power of the slow itself is barely stronger than Chrono Bobble, which makes getting the glacial aspect pretty disappointing. So this one's going into the C tier. Next is the Mending Aspect, which I think is by far the worst one. This is just pretty useless. It doesn't give you a debuff, it doesn't give you extra damage, all it does is heal the little drones around you. And why even bother when you can just pick them up off the ground again? Getting the Mending Aspect is a huge disappointment, so it's going into the D tier. The Blazing Aspect, on the other hand, is one of the better ones. Having a guaranteed burn on hit is not only good for Deathmark, but also just does a lot of damage in its own right. You can think of it like a total damage version of Bleed, or alternatively, an actually good version of Blight. For Aspects, this goes in the S tier. The Malachite aspect is a little worse. There aren't a whole lot of enemies that heal, and while it can be useful against Phase 4 Mithrix, or against certain scavengers that have picked up healing items, I'd say for the most part, it's just not that valuable. The good things I can say about it are that the spikes that you generate can be a decent damage bonus, and the healing debuff, once again, is very useful for Deathmark. So I would say not in the top tier of aspects, but far better than Glacial, A tier. The perfected aspect is next, and I think it is far and away the best one. The buffs that this gives you are really kind of crazy. It gives you a health boost, and turns all of your health into shields, like Transcendence, which in my opinion is just a straight benefit. It gives you extra movement speed, every hit debuffs enemies in terms of both their armor, which is just a straight damage buff, and in terms of their movement speed, which is only slightly less powerful than Chrono Bobble. And as a tiny added benefit, you also fire those little bombs that spawn around perfected enemies. Honestly, if I could pick up this equipment every time, I would. It's just that strong. Easy S tier. Next up is the overloading aspect, which in a lot of ways is really similar to the blazing aspect. The damage put out by the bombs is pretty close to equivalent from the amount of damage that you get from the blazing aspect's burn. However, the bombs do not act as a debuff for Deathmark. In return for that though, you get half of your health as shields. As I mentioned with the perfected aspect, I think the transcendence effect is wildly strong and I love it. So having half of your health as shields is not a downside to me. So this is going to go into the S tier. And now for the final aspect, we have the Celestine one. And for my money, 
This is just worse glacial. They slow for the exact same amount, except the Celestine aspect hides your allies around you, which means using your drones to draw aggro is suddenly no longer useful. If you're comfortable taking all of the aggro yourself and letting your drones do damage, then maybe you find this effect good. But for me, having the drones take the aggression of enemies is part of why they're useful. So I'm going to say this is worse than the glacial version. But now I want to hear what you think. How would you rate these items? Were there any aspects of some of these equipments that I missed? Let me know in the comments. Reading and responding to comments are honestly my favorite parts of making these videos, so I would greatly appreciate it. But regardless, I hope everybody enjoyed watching, and I hope all of you have a wonderful day.